Warning, this podcast has stories of real-life events and true crime that happens every day. These stories may contain adult language and graphic or disturbing details not suitable for everyone. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another episode of War Stories. I'm Tom. And I'm Chuck. And uh, we took the we took the week off from locker room last week, but we're back here Monday. Um, yeah. We've got this this week's episode of War Stories, and Chuck has a guest now. I, I'm curious because you told me you're gonna, you're sending sending me this video for this week's guest. Right, I sent it to you. You sent you it. Already have it. And and now I'm looking at this. So while I'm looking at this, you said this was a video that made you laugh and ha- you so much that you had to reach out. And yes. so why don't you explain who uh who we're we've got on this week and I'll I'll take so, it. So seriously basically what would you wait. do if your fourteen year old daughter went there to school is. and a man comes in the bathroom and says he's a trans person, a trans woman, and he takes a shower with your fourteen year old daughter, what would you do? Hey, there he is. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so hey, our guest has brought you some on. water, okay? Yeah, take a little sip. There you go. Yeah, no, the teeth not being there anymore. That's a thing. Yeah, and it stings a little bit right now, I'm sure. Yeah. Good. Look, you've been doing really good so far, but this next part, <laughs> knife this next out. part's going to sting a little bit, okay? <laughs> Don't scream because there's nobody going to hear you, okay? <laughs> And you kind of brought this on yourself, but you and me, we're going to get through it, kid, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sir. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So, so uh, I reached the guy in the video, uh, just so yes. listeners know, uh, it's a, it's a question. And then uh, the response was uh, a gentleman I see before me because <laughs> you reached out. Yes. I did. So his Instagram handle is a underscore Marine underscore called underscore doc. So a Marine called doc. And that's pretty fitting because this gentleman's name is Sean Dickens. He joined the Navy in July of 2001 to serve as a hospital corpsman. As a corpsman, I was attached. He was attached to a third battalion, sixth Marine company, uh, Kilo and deployed several times to Afghanistan in support of operation during freedom. In July of 2007, he left the Navy and joined the Marine Corps as a combat correspondent and public affairs specialist. Uh, served oh, as the editor affairs. for the Marine Corps Recruiting Depot in San Diego, uh, Chevron's newspaper, as well as the MCRD social media manager. He then lateral moved to the Amphibious Assault Crewman at the 3rd Amphibious Assault uh, Battalion, Camp Pendleton, eventually becoming a section leader. So as some of you may know, I was second tracks uh, out of Camp Lejeune in Courthouse Bay. And this gentleman is another Amtracker um, out of Pendleton. Now, welcome to the show, our uh, viral sensation. I, I have to admit that ve- it was a very funny video. Uh, John, how are you? Good, how are you doing? And I, to that, I just reply to anybody that, that, you know, says, what do you do with, you know, Tom Lester's minor attracted persons? You know, God can't do all the work, boys and girls. We have to do some heavy lifting ourselves occasionally. <laughs> Sometimes he calls upon his strongest soldiers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, the voice, the voice is amazing. Oh, well, welcome to the show, man. So, so tell us. Well, I guess tell us how you like. You know, the video is how you got here. So, tell us about the video and like how, when did you make it? And uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, yeah, like I don't. I'm like new to this whole social media thing, like. Figures like it out. Being an influencer and being like public, like I normally like had my stuff locked down, you know. So right. it's just like friends and family. But I recently graduated with my degree in marketing and advertising and whatnot. Sure. And one of the things was developing social media stuff. So I figured I might as well turn on this stuff and see what kind of fans and stuff like get drawn to different things. And uh just started messing around and 
random things hit and other things don't and we just kind of see where it goes <laughs> right <laughs> well i think you definitely hit it right nail right on the head especially i have um three four kids three daughters and i was like you said everything that i would do to someone i would <laughs> that's what the comment the comments on that that video alone are, are pretty much right along that same line how many video. views is it racked up <laughs> oh god uh couple hundred thousand last time i checked nice uh probably three or four hundred thousand i don't know awesome buck i think the most i've ever gotten was like 12 or fifteen thousand on a single video oh yeah i've only ever had like one or two things get above like fifty thousand and that was one of them yeah i mean if it it got well above fifty thousand so yeah (laughs) 20 20k likes like that is that is like you i've gotten twelve thousand on another account that i have i've gotten twelve thousand plays or thirteen thousand plays with like a hundred likes so you know you're hitting it hard when you're getting twenty thousand likes Mm -hmm. i mean the thing on that too i only have like i've just recently broke like seven thousand followers so like i don't even have a whole lot of people following me so whenever anything goes crazy like that it's still like boggles my mind on like how it got that far totally when i when i found you you were at like six thousand followers now you're at seven so in that short time span you're racking them up like crazy you have hit the algorithm you are on it you are rock solid and for only doing it for a short period of time kudos brother yeah Um, (laughs) so let's start by getting to know you a little bit as we like to do uh you how did you end up how, how did you end up in the military in the first place? And then how did you get here before we get into your stories? Uh, so I just joined the Navy straight out of high school. Um, Was that a family like thing? A or... heavy... What's that? Family thing? Yeah, kind of pretty heavy family background. Like my dad was in the Navy. My stepdad was in the Coast Guard and the Air Force. Both my grandfathers were in the Navy. So it was kind of a family tradition thing Mm -hmm. um my grandfather on my dad's side was a corpsman uh during the korean war Mm -hmm. and uh so growing up i was like you know i want to do something and always figured you know like medical was kind of like what i was drawn to so i was like you know i'll go in the navy and i'll be a corpsman like my grandfather and so joined straight out of high school. I was like 17, had to get my parents' signatures and stuff to go. Sure. And oh. uh, joined in July 2001. And then September 11th happened while I was in core school learning how to be a medic. And they came in and kind of locked everybody in a classroom and were like, hey, uh, so some stuff's happening. Uh, stay here until somebody comes back and don't leave. <laughs> and then they left. <laughs> and like two wow. hours later they, like, they, were, they were like all right so here's what's happening um you're gonna leave here go straight across the street to the barracks and you're not gonna leave the barracks at all until somebody comes and tells you otherwise you're gonna sit in like the the day room area and mm-hmm. that's it like wow. your room, don't do anything sit there and do not move and so we're all like what the hell is going on yeah, like what the shit did the president get killed what's Dude. going on to be sequestered like that and then they they turn the tv on and so like we're watching the news and we're seeing the news broadcasts of the planes hitting the towers and stuff like that and i was like oh kidoki well that's a thing you know so (laughs) yeah uh and then a chief came in and told us all like basically like try and call our parents but all the phones are down because of situation you know basically right. like crash the right. cell services and stuff so we Wait, hung at out that time at yeah. that time they don't know who the players are and they don't know if there's inside and military bases or they're just jamming everything to just they figure out what the fuck's going on yeah they didn't know anything they knew the first time ta- the first plane hit the second plane hit and then shortly right. after that was like with the pentagon and then right. the other one going down in the field and so yeah, it was pandemonium, and they were—they don't know what's going on. They thought maybe there was one heading towards Great Lakes because it was kind of in a similar area, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of training facilities, and that's where the Navy boot camp was at the time, and all that stuff. So like, they didn't know what to do. 
So it's basically sit here and don't move. At that point, and you then, look at what planes you have up, what trajectories they're on, and then what are the potential targets in the area where they theoretically could bring. I mean, it's it's a lot of guesswork. Yeah, and and on top of that, like you like I said, the phones aren't working, so they're not sure. getting any new information, and there, it was it was a shit show. Yeah, but uh, like the next day, <laughs> they uh, they came in, and I remember the senior chief comes in and he's like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, um, every one of you who thought you were going to go to some like cushy station where you're going to go to like some Naval hospital, like Key West or some shit like that. Uh, wrong answer. You're all going to the Marine Corps now. And oh my oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, a lot oh, of buddies in that room. <laughs> I didn't care. Cause I signed up to go be a corpsman attached to the Marines. So I was like, Best it thing didn't, you can do, bro. didn't affect me at all. But there were some unhappy kids in that room <laughs> when they found yeah. out they weren't going to some cushy hospital someplace. And then, uh, yeah, and then I graduated and they sent me to 2nd Marine Division. And then I got attached to 3rd Battalion, 6th Marines. And then it was like, well, plane leaves from over there. Uh, pack your sunscreen. And we were Holy off shit. into the desert. So, <laughs> And that was quick. And the words of the the quote from Braveheart, looks like we didn't get dressed up for nothing. <laughs> get dressed up for nothing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I was there. A li- well, I had to go to field med first to learn how to get attached to the Marines. And then as soon as I graduated field med, I got sent to 2nd Marine Division. And then they were like, hey, um, these are the these are the different Marine units that are available and whatnot and they kind of let us pick like where we wanted to go and at that time uh three six was getting standed up for anti-terrorism task force and i was like i'll go whatever and i like threw my hand up and they were like all right you're going and uh ended up being embassy duty in kabul for the first uh first deployment so we went over there and took the embassy in kabul and guarded it for like eight or nine months and then rotated out. And then the next time we went that next year, we went to um, like the Hindu Kush region of Afghanistan. So we were like up in the mountains. Oh yeah. Nothing going on. And jab. And <laughs> we were basically in the same, yeah, we were basically in the same spot where um, Marcus Luttrell and yeah. like that whole lone survivor. Operation Red Wing. Like mm-hmm. We were in that same kind yeah. of, yeah, uh, but we were there for like we were like a year or two prior to when his whole thing went down and wow. stuff. But yeah, fun times. <laughs> that's that's intense. I mean, from going from training, being in training, to be like, hey, some shit goes down. Next thing you know, you're sequestered, and next thing you know, now you're basically getting orders to go to war, like right off of the bat. Right. I think oh, yeah. That must be a very like. This is what I joined to do, but at the same time, you're like, oh, fuck, like, this is scary. <laughs> you know? Like, you're, you're a kid. It was, it was interesting, to say the least, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, and I think there's there's different levels of scared. There's, like, I, I like even thinking about it now, because I remember, um, you know, the first time I rolled Code 3, or, like, the first time, you know, we're getting ready guess- to, to, like, I, you get antsy. Right, you're like more anticipation. I guess. Yeah, yeah, like like excited, yeah. scared, like like oh shit, <laughs> yeah, like this is really happening. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because the first time we went, like I said, we went to um, the embassy, and so it was basically like I was running a little BAS out of the embassy, doing like sick wow. call and stuff, and then the Marines were pulling gate guard duty and like perimeter security and stuff so it wasn't really crazy like we'd go out on uh, vehicle patrols and stuff every once in a while and i'd have to go with as like corpsman support but like never really saw anything like too nutso and then yeah the second time we went it popped the fuck off like <laughs> and like we were just out there and that that one was the one where I was like, holy crap, because we got in country and you have to do like your two week acclimatization thing where you're sitting at like Bagram Airfield or something and they're hashing out logistics and whatnot. 
And then we flew out from Bagram to Asadabad, and we were at the FOB there in Abad. And like the first week or two we're there, we do the turnover with the, the unit that was on the ground already. And they were like, hey, we need a corpsman to go up on one of these OPs. because They had like the different OPs around the FOB. Mm. And they were like, hey, Dickens, you're going. And I was like, okay, I'm like whatever. And so I go up with these guys up to this top of this OP. And my command sent me to the wrong OP. Oh. So there's there was three around the base. There was one that was basically like you could just walk out the gate and be, go up a hill and you were on top of it. There was another one that you had to go up this valley and it was down at the end of this, this like valley finger thing. And then the mm -hmm. other one was across the river on top of the mountain and you had to get flown up there on like the mail helicopter when it came through. So mm -hmm. like every eight days, the mail came through. So it would dump off the mail, it'd pick up the guys to go up there, it'd fly them up to the top, hot swap with the guys that were up there, come back and drop them off, and then it would keep pushing up the river to the next base. That was the one I was supposed to go to. And they sent me to the one that was like right outside the gate because they oh. were still learning and they didn't know the names and all that kind of stuff still. And so they, they kind of botched it and sent me to the wrong one. And, uh, I no. got up there. We we set in oh, and we're right. hanging out. Things. And uh, what's that? They don't botch things. What are you talking about? Oh, no. Well-oiled yeah. machine. They, yeah, well-oiled machine. Right? Government service right. is completely full. Yeah, there was there was lots of training and drills, and nothing went wrong. But uh, yeah. <laughs> they sent me up there, and uh, I'm sitting up there with these couple guys, and we're just hanging out and doing the observation thing. And I'm questioning them, like, because it's me and, like, a corporal and, like, two Lance corporals and a PFC. And we're just hanging out on top of this hill. We can literally, like, look over the edge and see down into the base. And I'm like, why do they need me up here? Like, I'm right outside the gate. Like, if anything happened, we could just QRF up here in, like, five minutes. And so I'm, like, processing, like, why am I stuck up on this little thing? And we heard a detonation off in the distance and then like two or three seconds later we heard that and like the whole side of the mountain just exploded Ugh. like 30 like 30 feet from where we were sleeping and oh, uh, shit. it was like a 155 like howitzer type deal that they had in the hills that probably they left over it. from russia yeah, yeah some sort of leftover Russian artillery deal. It's a that big arty round. Shot at us. Oh yeah, it was massive, and it hit the side of the hill and exploded. And uh, I was like, "Oh shit!" And like then I heard another one go off, and so like we all kind of like hunker in the bunker, and I literally watched it go over, look like a big football, and it went <laughs> over top, and then it ended up oh. detonating, detonating in the valley. And uh, I was like, "Yo, they really are are shooting real." things at us right now and like i i couldn't process like <laughs> right yeah you know, i was like oh man from dying i'm like yo did you see that thing and they're like they're using they're real idiots. bullets like, <laughs> yeah. they're really <laughs> trying to fucking kill us they're trying Holy to shit. kill us like, for real the marines are all like they hear yeah you know, they hear stuff and they're like hey coming and they get flat and they're covering themselves and they're taking cover and stuff because it's beaten into them at you know school of infantry and stuff like incoming rounds get flat and all that stuff I didn't get like I don't remember that. So, like I had like three days worth of like incoming training at, at field meds. So they're like incoming. And I just kind of like half hunched down, like looking around, like <laughs> what's going on? Like <laughs> whatever. I mean, but, but yeah, like what's so, really... clearly clearly you had not gone prone enough if you could see the football coming in. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I didn't go prone at all. Like I was right. still like fully standing up. I didn't even have like my flak on because I had been like sitting in the Look. rack. So I'm like standing there in like my boots and like my little blue PT shorts with my like black <laughs> over my shoulder. This is that's my hilarious. Helmet in my hand, and they're like, they're like, Doc, what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm like, what's Doc's the on? bravest like, man. The fuck, I just woke up, dude. Yeah, like, Doc's got balls of steel. Wait, what's like, happening? Yeah, like, yeah, Doc's nuts. He's absolutely out of his mind. Like, that Doc's crazy. 
Yeah. Cool. And that was the first attack we got in the on the deployment it was like within 30 feet of where I was sleeping. And then after that, I kind of felt like they were specifically targeting me because like every time <laughs> I turned around, it was it was me. I was within like 50 or 60 yards of like wherever something was blowing up. Well, for like the, like the artillery the shell went off 30 feet from my bed <laughs> and I took that personal. I wouldn't be surprised if they had an OP out there watching you guys seeing like, okay, guy in a blue shorts, that's their medic. Let's just take yeah. him out because if we take him out, there's no one else to do medical aid. I don't know. It was like this. Like, bro, bro, you see the guy in the blue shorts? Yeah, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get that fucker. Look at this blue short. Fuck it. I'm going to get that guy. That dude is fearless, man. He doesn't duck or anything. He just stands there like he's fucking insane. He, he's very you had no idea. He is very important to be so brave. We will target him yeah. the fucking time now. This guy, he is he is the number one person in all number one motherfucker. That guy. Well, because they know all yeah. the, the insignias and shit. That's why you don't wear insignias. You don't salute when you're on a base. You know that was drilled into us. So I wouldn't be surprised if they knew that. And what well, they did know that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they knew like. Okay, these are Navy medics. These are this because they're not stupid, right? There's a lot of people from the well, U.S. over there. That and that and I'm carrying like twice the amount of crap that the Marines right. are. Right. You know, they go up. They have they have a rifle. They got their ammo. They have like a day pack. I've got a rifle and a pistol and ammo and a day pack and a med bag on the front and like all this ridiculous stuff. And so I, I I'm obviously different than everyone else for some reason. So yeah. It's that Vietnam thing, like, you know, oh, the officers got different right. things. Let's take them out first. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be Why surprised. Why backpack? Like... <laughs> well, I mean, eventually, you know, you, so you did all those tours in the, in the Navy. Um, how many, how many did you do in the Navy? So I went to Afghanistan twice. And then after the second time I came back and I got orders to naval hospital jacksonville down in florida okay. and i went down there and i was there for a couple months and they were like hey you were like you were in the marines uh you like to deploy and stuff we're sending <laughs> you to get we're sending you to gitmo oh shit. So, yeah so i went to gitmo as a medic for six months okay how was that insane right bro. like Oh my god. So well okay. So the base isn't bad. Like, yeah, you're on an island, but like when you're off, like yeah, you're, you're on Cuba. snorkeling. Yeah, you're in cute. Like you you would do whatever. Like you're snorkeling. We used to be like, a vacation spot. And all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was nuts. But when you're working, dude, it was it was crazy. And because I was with the Marines and I had a security clearance and all that kind of stuff, they have like an entire section that is like the high value. Right. like prisoners and stuff right. and you can't even get... has a boo-boo <laughs> yeah like basically they called them specials and basically you had to have a security clearance and like all this crazy stuff and they had to do an additional background check on me before i got down there and all kinds of stuff and then they were like you're the specials guy so i was going in and out through this like special area and, and seeing that stuff and then um yeah did that and it was crazy because we were we were down there for the anniversary of September 11th. So that was kind of a weird, surreal thing for me to from being like. I just Afghanistan. like how we're glossing over the fact that he you just wrapped up your time at Gitmo as I did that stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I'm not, I get I'm it. Not we're not at liberty. Sure what I could be right. Like, in trouble and like, I don't know if there's like a statute limitations right. or whatever right. it's called on like. I'm not like talking about things. Yeah, I've seen uh, some shit. yeah. no, I get it. It was like, uh, so you know, people. there was some stuff and some things, and uh, yeah. how many spooks were down there? And uh, yes, I get um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you saw uh, some spooky shit, dude. This is Mr. Smith and his friend, not, Mr. Smith. <laughs> not even like spooky stuff, just like weird stuff. Like, I don't know. I mean, the war on terror is over, right? So, I mean, all that stuff, I, I could probably talk about it. Like, I mean, I, don't say anything you're not comfortable with, but yeah, like, it, you know, it's fascinating. It's, so, it was like an. It, I'll, I'll give you so there's two special areas that were down there like i don't know if the stuff's still 
whatever. But one section was like people that got hooked up in a country and just zip tied and like disappeared Black overnight. Bag. Yeah. And then got to Gitmo and went through all that stuff. And then they realized that like, oops maybe he is just a farmer and he's not connected to anything <laughs> but now he's in gitmo oh fuck and so they had a whole how do we give him there. back yeah and that's that's exactly what it was it was like right. these dudes that were like we're trying to get you home or at least in the vicinity of home so that you can figure it out on your own so they had like a whole compound where they were just like free roaming they had like the guards around it to make sure they didn't like escape and stuff but like for the most part, they didn't have any sort of cages or, or cells or anything like that in there. There was no fences. General population. It That's a, it, a squad. Um, can you imagine what that like 849 courts? Can you imagine what that 849 yeah. form is like, Chuck? Uh, at the time, we felt we had enough to arrest you. We were like, right. now, just sign this form and we'll wow. get you as close to home as we possibly can. You, a lot of figure out. <laughs> a lot of verbal judo had been had right. at that point in time because what had happened was is we have this lovely goat as a parting gift <laughs> here's here's a here's goat, a goat and two chickens we're some sorry on, <laughs> here's some poppy seeds have yeah fun. on behalf of the u.s oh, government man. yeah <laughs> and then New that was like one second and then the other section was like the big dudes like the right. heavy hitters that were like right. you're in you're in some serious trouble over here mm -hmm. and that section was kind of weird because they had like the dudes that got caught like digging in ieds and stuff like that that were like high on the list like Ooh. of people and it was like you're you're in this like isolation area well, we're on we're on get no. will you would you like the waterboarding section or the non-waterboarding section yeah, right. <laughs> And it was like inside the same area where those guys are, are the other guys that were like named specifically in documents overseas at some point. Mm -hmm. But when they were captured, they rolled over and just started giving like intel. Uh -huh. And so those dudes are in like a whole different area. Right. And they're, they're getting snitch like section. special treatment. <laughs> yeah, they're in the, the snitches section. Right. And they've got like playstations and shit and they're right. like playing video games and stuff and they make like, it falafel oh, yeah like it was <laughs> nuts and i'm like walking in and i'm like i'm i gotta go through like four gates six fucking cavity searches and all this shit just to get into this place and then i get in there and they're playing fucking tiger woods with the army guards <laughs> and i'm like oh, what God. the fuck is going on bro like, <laughs> look i had someone look in my rectum to yeah, get you. yeah. You're playing fucking Tiger Woods, <laughs> yeah. you motherfucker, and, and not like old Tiger Woods too. Like the most recent, like drop of Tiger. Like they're Woods. letting them pre-order and shit. The yeah, like I can't even get it at the PX yet. Yeah. And this motherfucker's got it. Like, Amazon can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine God. you're playing Call of Duty online with some fucking detainee in Gitmo? <laughs> Yo. I don't know if they had internet. They probably didn't. Have no, they internet. probably didn't. But I yeah, you could the chats, the chat rooms on those things. You can you can slip messages. But but yeah, dude. Like, and I walk in, and he's like, "Hey, Doc, what's going on, my man? You want to you want to get in on the game?" And I'm like, "No, I don't want to fucking. I don't want to sit down on your couch and play Tiger Woods with you, bro. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here." Well, no, dude, cool. you try to kill my my people. Like, yeah, what the dude. fuck? <laughs> no, bro, that <laughs> was the thing. Was it's not that we don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. Why you got to bring up old shit? <laughs> <laughs> Let the past die, man. Let it's it's over. I watch Friday. I'm cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So that was that, and then I got out of out of Gitmo, went back to NAS Jacks, and then they told me that. I was coming up on orders to re-enlist and they were like, hey, so about that. Um, if you re-enlist and you don't pick up the next rank, you run the chance of going over into like that high year, 10 year yep. bracket. Yep, know all about that and shit. Gonna, and we're going to have to kick you out and pay you mm -hmm. a bunch of money. So we're just not going to let you re-enlist. And they're like, you can extend for a year and see if you pick up. 
and whatnot. If you pick up, then we'll cut your orders and send you wherever you want to go and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, nah, fam. <laughs> like, but this is a I'm bad not, deal for me. How this no. is not giving you a free year to maybe pick up and then get <laughs> right. They won't, they will like fucking non wreck you or you know, just make the cutting score so high that you won't be able to to pick it up and you'll just be like, well, fuck, man. In the Navy, in the Navy, you have to take a test. Like, it's a written oh. test that you have to take. So you have to do oh, your, shit. just like the Marines, you have to do, like, your physical fitness and get your scores right. on that. But then it's it's a written exam. And so, like, you have to take an exam and score a certain percentile on the exam. Oh, shit. And that's how you get your points and stuff. And the thing with Dude. that is, Corman rate was, like, a 150% over man because of oh. the war anybody with half a brain they were sticking into medical field for some capacity right. so they were getting dudes that like they were getting like hundreds on the exam and they still weren't picking up no shit and stuff and it was like and here you're over there like well shit i got in it like, exactly the right time <laughs> i'm not <laughs> yo like crack app i'm solid bro book book medical stuff like right yeah i'm i'm done <laughs> I was like, well, I guess so I'll just take my terminal leave. So and, that's when uh, you went in the Marine Corps. Yeah. I actually, I went to the Marine recruiter on terminal leave and was like, hey, I'm getting out of the Navy, but I still want to serve. Like I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with, like I'm not broken. I want to join again. And I went to like all of the, like I, I weighed the options, right? Cause I was like, yeah, the Navy, who's going to take me? And I was like, I was thinking like Air Force, Coast Guard, something like that, because Coast Guard would be kind of similar, mm -hmm. you know, nautical, and I got all the sure. stuff and just go into their medical field. And they were like, nah, we don't need you. <laughs> I was like, okay, no. cool. like, neat. So then I like I went maybe Air Force, and uh, I have tattoos that stuck out like a fraction of an inch below my Charlie shirt. And they were like, no, you got visible tattoos. And I was like, what? Cool yeah oh, yeah they're big like, on that like and not even a full inch like it's like if i if i hold my arm up it's like a fraction like this little part right here what? they were like nope done so i was like hey. cool. and i was like i'm not going in the army because fuck the army they almost got me killed <laughs> so many times in afghanistan <laughs> like, <laughs> so i was like i was like marine corps let, let's do it baby and i went in and talked to the guy i know those guys yeah i was like i was like i'll fit right in like they love me well, you're a devil doc like, at that point yeah and uh so i go in and talk to the guy and he's like he's like yeah dude like we're talking and i'm like i want to join all this stuff and he's like hell yeah let's do it and then i get to the point where like i'm on terminal leave and he's like whoa, 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 whoa. what and i'm like yeah i'm in the navy right now and i'm on terminal leave and he's like i can't talk to you until you are no longer affiliated with the navy like you got to come back with a dd214 wouldn't you have to go talk. wouldn't you have to go to a prior service recruiter no so they like, gave just, me that shit yeah I, well i was talking to him he was like i can't do nothing with you until you're out once you're okay. out i can do whatever i need to do and i was like cool i'll be back in a week and so i left and i came back and did finish my terminal leave, had to get all dressed up in my working whites, you know, to go and check out and all that stuff. So I showed back up that next Friday, still in my whites from checking out and was like, all right, dude, I'm ready. I'm got my DD 214. And he was like, no shit. Like you were serious. Like I thought you were fucking with me. And I was like, no, let's do this. And he was like, all right. And so we started running the paperwork, but because I was prior service, like, and I had tat like the big thing that held me up was tattoo waivers mm -hmm. and stuff. So like you had to process that, and that took like a week or so. But I couldn't sign anything until the day that I was leaving because being prior service, like they have some sort of thing where like they don't want to run like the risk of me being like you know what, never mind and whatnot, and it's screwing them over. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things like if you're prior military trying to go in the Marines or any branch, I assume. Like the day you sign the papers, you get on the bus and you leave. So there's no like backing out. Right. So they're like, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> right. But he could be yeah. fucking with us. Yeah, I mean, he's like, cool. Uh, right. He's cool. And we, yeah, we're cool. Right. But he could be fucking with us. <laughs> but he could be, he could be pulling our, our legs and stuff. Right. So he's like, well, what, like, then the thing was like, what job do I do in the Marines? And uh, 
So then we're like looking at school seats and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, he's like, I can get you something that you're looking at, but it's going to be like five or six months down the road before something opens up. He's like, or you can go like undesignated ground option and we can have you in tonight. And I was like, fuck it, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> Let Ooh, me call my gamble first. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, because I hadn't told my parents any of this. Like, I oh. wasn't, I didn't tell them that I was going, hey, I'm going in the Marines now. Like, nothing. <laughs> like, oh, so, we get our son back. <laughs> yeah. I, I called nope. my mom and I'm like, hey, so, um, I'm going to need you to come get my car from the recruiter's office. And she's like, why? And I was like, because I'm leaving. And she's like, what do you mean? You didn't have leaving? to do MEPS again, like, right? Oh, yeah. I had to go to MEPS. And oh, so that, that was you're leaving the MEPS and then you're everything you're pumping out. Yeah. Like, I go to MEPS and I don't leave MEPS. My next stuff after MEPS is Paris Island. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, awesome. Yeah. And so I was like, so I'm leaving. I'm joining the Marines. And she's like, what the fuck? And, you know, and then I'm like, she's like, you tell your father. And I'm like, okay. So I call my dad and I'm like, hey, pop, uh, you know, just so you know, I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks. Uh, you won't be able to get a hold of me because I'm joining the Marines. And he's like, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, they were not happy because I just came back from some pretty hairy shit in Afghanistan. And now I'm going back in the Marines to go back over there was their thought process. And, uh, I was like, yeah, so bye. And I left and I went up there and got to Paris Island and went through that whole process, which as a prior corpsman was an entirely different Dude, experience from fucking rough. regular. Oh, not even. Dude. It was insane. Yeah. Well, first thing is because I, I knew like I'm going up here. I'm not bringing shit with me that I that I have any like concern about getting back like. I'm not wearing any kind of fancy clothes. Like if all my shit gets thrown in a trash bag and I never see it again, like I don't care. Right. And so I, what year was this? Some, this is in 2007. Ooh. And, uh, Ooh. Yeah. So what month? July, 2007. Oh fuck. You got there right before me. It was in September. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I get up there and get on a little yellow footprints and go through the whole like, deal drill instructor screaming at me and stuff but my when i left i had on a 8404 feel fmf corman shirt and whatnot and so i get up there and they see my shirt and they're like what the fuck why are you wearing that motherfucker come here bitch like and all that stuff you know <laughs> like, and oh, they're like they're looking at me because i've got a, cor- a shirt on that says i'm a corman and they're right. like who the fuck right. do you think you are a Corbin? Like, uh, like, panic, panic. Fuck. I don't know what's going on. And they they take my record, and then they're flipping through my record, and they see, like, my DD-214 and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll never forget the staff sergeant's flipping through my shit. <coughs> and uh, sees my DD-214, sees I'm a Corman, sees I have combat action and Afghanistan campaign and all this other stuff. And he's like, you are a Corman. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, come with me and he like walks me down this hallway away from everyone else and we go into this back room and he's like flipping through some stuff and he's like stay right here and then he just leaves me in this like back hall <laughs> like and, uh, oh shit is this the rape room? i'm like, like oh <laughs> this is never good like they always separate the weaker ones before they kill them <laughs> right, right. <laughs> i've seen i've seen discovery channel i know what's up and uh so i'm just standing there and i'm waiting and I'm waiting. And then all of the other kids that were on the bus with me show up and they've got like shaved heads and all this stuff. Like they went through haircuts and all that stuff. And I didn't go to haircuts. Like I'm still <laughs> sitting there with my Corman hair. And then they're like, all right, everybody in this room. And we go in and sit down and that staff sergeant comes back and he's like, you sit here. And he puts me in like the very first seat. And I'm like, oh man, like <laughs> I'm nothing, so nothing good is coming from this. Right. And, uh, this master guns comes in and just uh, like, you, you know, those, like just grizzled, angry, like yes, master guns, like probably did yes. a whole, whole tour on the drill field. Like, yeah, comes in, flops in the chair, flops everybody's service records down. And he's like, he's like, did anybody do drugs? This is your last chance. Like whatever. And all this stuff. He's just like weeding the people out, you know? And he's like, who's got tattoos? Raise your hand. 
And so I'm like, oh, I raise my hand. And he's like, keep your hand up. And he's like, put your hand down if you have, or keep your hand up if you have more than two tattoos. So I still got my hand up. And he's like, keep your hand up if you got more than three, more than four, more than five. And I'm still sitting there with my hand up. It's like me and two other kids. And he's like, you three, come here. And so he wants to see our tattoos and stuff. And uh, goes through the first two. And he's like, all right, you two go sit down. And then he gets to me. And he's like, let me see him. And so I'm like, all right. So I'm showing all my stuff. I got stuff on my arms. And I got things on my chest and whatnot. And on my side, I have this really big piece that says, through hell and back for a wounded Marine. And it's got a corpsman dragon like a wounded Marine. But the corpsman has like angel wings, right? And he sees that and he reads it. And he's like, what the hell? And he like looks at my thing. And there's like, I didn't put a two and two together, but on my service record, there's like a big PS for prior service, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's right. like, not piece through. of shit, right? Yeah, no, no, I'm not a piece of shit. Like right. I thought, yeah. <laughs> so he's flipping through it and he sees my DD214 and all my stuff. And he's looking. And he's like, you are Corman? And I was like, yes, Master Guns. And he's like, why are you here? And I was like, I don't know. They told me to come stand here. And he's like, no dipshit. No like, dipshit. Why are you in the right like, <laughs> <laughs> That's a and movie like, moment right there. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> the Navy didn't want me, and I wasn't done. I, I still wanted to serve. And he's like, okay. And he's like, you stay. Everyone else, get the fuck out. And I'm like, god damn it. Like, how many times is this going to happen? Fuck, I'm getting singled out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right. And he's looking at my thing, and he sees ground option undesignated like mos and he's like fuck no he's like you are not going undesignated ground option are you out of your mind and uh he's like all right i'll make you a deal you make it through training you're gonna come back and see me we're gonna pick you a better mos and i was like yes sir and he's like all right so i go go through training do all my stuff and then completely forget about talking to this dude until after the crucible and all that stuff. And my mm. senior drill instructor is like, Dick Ends, let's go, bitch. And I'm like, what did I do now? <laughs> and we go, go back and see this master gun dude, constantly. <laughs> like, it, and uh, Love go it. back and see him. And he's like, remember me? And I'm like, nope. Not really. Like, uh, I've gotten. Do you know what just happened to me? Bunch. Yeah, like I, uh-uh. I got hazed and fell asleep a bunch since then. And uh, he's like, "We're picking you a new MOS," and I'm like, "Oh, that's right. I do remember that vaguely." And so, what was that like seven years ago? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, it's been eighty four years. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so he's like, "All right." And he flips the. He's got the big MOS chart on his desk and he flips it around so I can read it and he's like pick something else and so I'm looking at it and I'm like hmm and I'm like my brother was artillery in the Marine Corps so I'm like you know I'll do artillery like I can do that like and he's like nah and he's like he takes a pencil (laughs) and he starts circling shit on this chart (laughs) and he's like if I just circled it you ain't doing it and I was like Oh my gosh. Okay. And I'm looking at what he circled and it's like artillery tanks, AAVs, everything infantry, motor T, like and a couple other things. He basically said you're an asset. Huh? We need to put you somewhere proper. Yeah, basically. He was like, I was like, I was like, looks like you circled all the fun stuff, Mass Aren't. And he's like, okay, smart ass. And he basically says the same thing. He's like, uh, you are an unofficial celebrity. Uh, because the base commander knows your name, like personally. And he oh said, shit! He, he designated you will not do anything that is not a equal or above your capabilities. He's like, you're not getting stuck in some bullshit MOS to fucking rot away. He's like, you're going to be a benefit to the core whether you like it or not. <laughs> and I oh was my like, gosh, Roger. So go through a couple MOSs and he keeps shooting them down. Like I tried to do counter Intel and he's like, hold on, let me make a phone call. And he's like, yo, got a guy wants to go counter Intel. Okay. He hangs up. He's like, he's going to call me back. Like two seconds later, the phone rings and he picks it up and he's like, yo, all right, click. Yeah. Pick something else. It's full. And I'm like, okay. So then I'm like, uh, military police. 
because my parents like were both law enforcement growing up and stuff. So I've got kind of mm-hmm. a, a background. Sure. In that. And he's like, you'll never get promoted. Pick something else. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, they're trying to look out for you. The ones I am allowed to pick master guns. <laughs> yeah. Basically like, where would you like me to go? Master Sergeant, like point on the chart, which one I should be looking at. And while I'm sitting there contemplating that, um combat correspondent like jumps off the page at me and i'm like combat correspondent and he's like do you know what do you even know what that is and i was like yeah like private joker from full metal jacket like take pictures write stories i'll make you famous and he's like there's a little more to it than that idiot but yeah basically <laughs> and so i'm like i'm like cool and he's like let me see and so he calls the pao shop on the depot and he's like, yeah, I got a kid who wants to go PAO. He's got to get interviewed and whatnot. And so then I end up getting golf carted over to PAO and having to talk to a gunny and a lieutenant colonel over there. Oh, Jesus. And they're like, they're like, wow. yeah, he's, he knows how he can talk and he's read books. So like he's whatever, <laughs> like sign him up. And so I ended up going to public affairs school for my MOS up in uh, Fort Meade, Maryland and whatnot and then get up there and then i get up there and i'm a pfc with a server stripe and four rows of ribbons <laughs> oh my god right <laughs> okay i'm yeah, surprised whoa, 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 whoa. PFC? Like, they now, didn't make you a lance no nah. fucking boy scouts were getting lance corporal right off the bat yeah but yeah prior service i was nah. a little i was a little <laughs> ass chapped about that but, oh shit uh, yeah so i show up pfc service stripe four rows of ribbons and they're like, what the fuck did you do, bro? Like, they thought I was like a sergeant or a corporal when I got the motive. They thought, yeah, they thought you got busted, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, no, it was a duck. So I had to have that conversation basically every other week while I was up in right. Fort Maryland because the oh people gosh. are rotating out and stuff. I, and, dude, uh, I would have paid for you to say, I fucked the colonel's wife. <laughs> Right. Dude, we had a guy in, in courthouse pay who fucked the fucking master sergeant's daughter. Right? This is this is what I'm saying. Oh my god, yeah. Dude, I sh- I showed up and there was a master sergeant that was in charge of the Marine Corps detachment up at Public Affairs School, and I show up in my alphas, and the poor little like desk duty is like some lance corporal that just came from MCT. Like she doesn't know shit. Right. And I walk in. And I'm standing there and I'm like, I'm here to check in for training. And she looks up and sees me and like, does that like visual process of like, this dude is a oh, PST with four rows of ribbons and service stripes. Like, what the fuck? And she's like, are you a pipeliner or a fleet returnee? And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means. And she's <laughs> like, are you coming? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, what? And she's like, <laughs> that are English? you coming from the fleet or yeah. Or are you coming from training? And I'm like, yes. Like I I don't know how to answer that. Uh, okay, like, still hold, confused. Yeah, both. Yeah, hold please. And so she like shuffles down the hallway and comes back with this master sergeant in tow. And he's got my service record, and he looks at me, and then he's just like, "Come with me." And he like walks down to his office, and flops in his chair behind his desk. And I'm standing there like the good PFC that I am, you know, like reporting his order, master sergeant. He's like, "Sit down, <laughs> dummy." <laughs> and he's like flipping Love through it. my shit and he's like what the fuck and he same thing like you were a corpsman you're with the infantry like why are you here and I thought, i've got to rehash all of that stuff and he's like fair enough and he's like all right bro you're in a very unique position here he's like because you're not coming back from the fleet for follow-on training but you're not exactly a pipeliner like you've been around and you've whatever and he's like so just don't talk to anybody just do your work and get the fuck out of here. And I was like, Roger. And uh, yeah. that's what I did. And I just kept my head down, did all my work. I didn't socialize with any of the junior Marines. Like I did, I was in my own room, like sequestered off to the side. Like nobody fucked with me. Like on field day, like they'd have the senior Lance corporals and stuff would be running field day. And they would like, come down and go to start to go in my room and then be like oh shit it's doc's room and they would fucking leave and like like the blood of the lamb on the door frame celebrity status that's over peace and shit yeah (laughs) mainly because the master sergeant he was like yo he's like this is doc doc is special you are not 
do not fucking talk to doc doc will not talk to you carry on and i was like okay and so that's what i did (laughs) you have the most unique bizarre marine corps origin story of anyone we've ever spoken so awesome so weird and then i get i get sent to mcrd paris island as my first duty station when i graduated from combat correspondence school so i went from the depot to training back to the depot and then i was just on mcrd san diego for my whole time as a combat correspondent then uh showed up and oh so many people like well the, the thing about the public relations field in the marine corps is that it's all the people that like think they're smart but they're like stupid Dipsions. smart yeah like they read a book or something book like that. smart no com and, no street smart yeah not not yeah. a lot of common sense on stuff but they right. think they're special. all library no no freaking yeah. good and i'm just like so yeah. like i do not fit in and i show up and at this point i picked up lance so i showed up a lance corporal but check in and all of these like you know corporals and sergeants that were there like are immediately intimidated by me because they have like two ribbons and they've been in for five years and they've got nothing. And here comes Schmucky, the PFC Lance Corporal with more ribbons than their drilling. The yeah. mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, you got a fruit salad on your chest. I, yeah. Everybody thought I was trying to step on their dick and I wasn't like, I was just trying to do my job and, you know, carry on. And, uh, so then I, you know, do my deal and then I'm up for orders and they're like, the, the monitor is like, Hey bro, uh you're going marketing and public affairs duty and i was like no i'm not because marketing and public affairs duty is basically you get sent to a recruiting district and you like you're the one that like buys the billboard space and oh, shit like, for that area and it's non-deployable and you get attached to like a recruiting district and stuff and it's oh it's not fun that's a bullshit. And I was like, I got, I got sent to the depot. I got sent to the depot on my first duty station because the master sergeant was like, hey, these other kids haven't had any of the experiences that you've had. You've been to combat. You've been deployed. You've been to all these places. I'm sending you to this duty station specifically so that these other kids can get these duty stations where they're going to be able to go and get those experiences. And so when he when he makes that argument, like I can't really like, yeah, you can start to argue that. with that. You know, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, like he's like, you'll get your turn. He's like, you go do your thing. He's like, you get orders, you go someplace else. So I sat and I I wasted away on the depot writing recruit feel good stories for my first enlistment, and then they were like, yeah, you're gonna go to like Sheboygan, Iowa, and make billboards, and I was like, the fuck I am, bro. I am not re-enlisting in this MOS if that's the only option for me. I want to go deployable someplace. Like, that's it. And he's like, well, this is where I'm sending you. And I was like, well, joke's on you, Chief, because one, I'm not like some newbie. Two, technically, I'm a first-term Marine, which means I can lap move and I can get a special school and all that kind of stuff. Right. And I'm cashing that card in. And so... (laughs) I was like, I'm lat moving. And so I ran a package to lat move and ended up picking. I was like, what what will guarantee me deployments? And I was like, I can't go infantry. Because if you show up in the infantry, at this point, I was a sergeant. Like, I picked up sergeant, corporal and right. sergeant, like, immediately. And I was like, I can't show up to the infantry as a sergeant and think that anything is going to happen to me except for that I'm going to get treated like hot dog shit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you. I cannot believe we haven't even gotten to you as a sergeant in the infantry, and we are already out of time. <laughs> are we really? Yeah, I know it's been a blast, man. I've just been, I've just been sitting here, and I look at the time. I'm like, and I, I'm like, oh, we are, we are going long. Uh, so let's, can, Sean, can we have you back? Yeah, absolutely. This is this is okay. a, we need to we need to get this we need to do a part two because I I'm just realizing yeah. like, we need the rest of this story. I want to. I want to hear your fucking. We haven't even gotten to a damn track yet. <laughs> when you get into the tracks as a sergeant, like that's what I want to hear. Um, and then I want to, you know, look, just it. dive in deeper. Oh, what's this? What's this? 
you guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. This episode, we have gotten an, all the way through it, and we're out of time, and we still haven't even gotten to the cool shit. <laughs> so, we're going to have this guest back on for part two. So, uh, that's, that's just what's going to have to happen. Now, I do understand you do have a dedicated... We always uh, have our guests, uh, give our guests the opportunity to dedicate their episode to a uh, uh, fellow brother, sister, officer, or soldier, or marine, um, someone they want to dedicate their episode to. And I understand that you have someone. Yes. So I, since I'm coming back for part two, I can split these up. So okay. this one I will, I will dedicate to Lance Corporal Justin Thacker. He was killed in action in Barakout, Afghanistan. June 24th, 2004. And this was when you were a corpsman? Yes, this okay. was when I was a corpsman. All right, rest easy, brother. We've got it from here. Um, we always, like I said, we, we, we'll keep dedicating these episodes uh, until people, uh, we don't have any more to dedicate them to. Because hopefully if we ever got to that place, Chuck, it would be a good day. But I doubt, I yeah. seriously doubt that will ever happen. So. So that, so. This has been a blast, and I, I cannot wait for part two. We're going to have to have you back on, and uh, we'll uh, definitely get the rest of your time in the tracks because we are already running into the end of our in, in the end of our episode. Just like that, man. It's it's painless and fun, and it's been a blast. So uh, well, it will be to be continued. Yeah, I cannot. Sure. Well, I, cannot I mean, wait. he wants to hear the track stuff too because that's his jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you guys even before we started recording you guys were talking about knowing some of the same people so it'll be or, a- yeah knowing knowing of yeah 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 for so sure. well i want to say ahead, this Chuck. first first off sean thank you so much for coming on i can't wait to talk to you again um and and diving diving deeper um you are the epitome of a true hero you serve in the navy then went to the marine corps without any fucks and you're just like i'm doing it after already uh, a well established career in the navy i mean that was that's amazing so hats off to you and that's just amazing and yeah the navy's everyone, fuck up is the marine corps gain yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure um and everyone thank you for listening if you like today's podcast the content we provide please help us out by rating and reviewing us on apple podcast or spotify or whatever platform you subscribe to our podcast is available on all major podcasting platforms as well as on our YouTube. Reviews and ratings are how podcast platforms decide what to recommend to you, um, what to recommend. So your reviews really help us grow the show. Also, please give us a follow on Instagram at war underscore stories underscore official and our Facebook at war stories podcast. If you already follow us, please like and share our posts and our content. If you click the link in our bio on Instagram and Facebook, you'll be able to reach all of our social media sites and our website. Another way to support us is by visiting our website at www.warstoriesofficial.com. We have uh, some merch there. We have shirts, patches, stickers, wooby hoodies available. If you have a story you'd like to, uh, to tell and you want to be a guest on our show, please email your info and a brief description of your story to us at booking.warstories at gmail.com. Again, that is booking.warstories at gmail.com so I can get you booked. We're always looking for veterans, law enforcement, firefighters, medics, uh, corrections officers, dispatches, and nurses, as well as police. Um, if you have a friend who you would think would be a great fit for the show, let them know about us and give them our booking email. Again, thank you for the support. Stay safe. Yeah, and again, I will just reiterate what Chuck said. Deshaun, thanks for coming on. I, I can't wait to get up on part two. And for the rest of you, until our next episode, come home with your shield or on it.